So we recently did a job where we was floating and setting an entire room uh, with bonding rather than boarding and skimming it because it was something the customer has to be done that way. And on this job we had a brick archway which normally would just board the underside of it by cutting down the back of a bit of plasterboard. Uh, but this brick archway was a little bit out of shape uh, and rather than just freehanding it or boarding it, we decided to try something that I'd seen in a, one of the old plastering textbooks, which is just a more traditional way of floating and forming an arch. And so this is the book, it's called Plastering by JB Taylor. It's worth having around, it's got quite a lot of information in there, uh, especially for any of you plastering nerds. Not that there's many plastering nerds out there. There's a horizontal length of wood that stretches from either side of the, the walls beneath the arch. This is called the stretcher. Uh, and in the center of that, you find the pivot point, which is the middle, the middle point that we want to use as the center of the arch shape. And so in this particular book, you're looking at a barrel ceiling and how to basically screed a barrel ceiling. So we're not actually doing this, but it's a similar concept and similar technique. On the other page, uh, this is again, this is how you do a dome ceiling, but this is basically, this is much more accurate as to what we actually did. It was a very similar concept, but this is a slightly more sophisticated device than we used. But the gist of it is the same. So yeah, we're not traditional plasterers, so we're much more modern plasterers, and modern plastering is much more focused on skimming and boarding and, and obviously all the, using all the modern materials. But we decided to take this opportunity since it had shown itself. And one of the main reasons is the bricks uh, were sort of flat on one side, and so we'd not got quite a perfect arch shape. So we figured that rather than trying to do this by freehand or, or just winging it, we would really try to get the shape right. And this is the result of that. So the video you're about to see now is, is actually built, well, we, we build the, the device off screen, but it's pretty simple. Um, if we were to change anything, we'd have probably put a little bit of uh, probably aluminium sheet or something at the top just to give it a real fine edge so it could, so it could actually finish the, uh, the plaster because this was causing it to drag a little bit. But apart from that, it worked pretty well. Get your business fanned with Biz Plus. We do everything from website and graphic design to marketing services, including search engine optimization, Google and Facebook ads. We're a five-star rated company featured as excellent on Trustpilot with over 50 happy customers. Click the link below to book in a free call to see if we would be a good fit for you. Biz Plus, putting the plus in your business. Oh, hello. So there's the arch. If you look on the right hand side at the top, you'll see that there's a slightly straight three or four bricks uh, where the curve just seems to stop and it sort of almost the last brick seems to lean out a little bit so it ruins the shape of it, which is why we decided to do this in the first place. So there's the stretcher. Um, we'd already measured where the pivot point would be, so we had to figure out whereabouts was equal distance from all of the bricks, or at least close enough so that we could get a nice continuous geometrical curve underneath. So as you can see, about there is where it's clearing everything, so we've bolted a big long screw through the, through the piece to create a pivot, and I am pretty, chuffed with that, as you can see. So here we're just applying the bonding. And it's worth remembering that really we're just trying this technique out just because it's something I'd seen in the past and it always seemed an interesting way of doing it. Um, obviously we could have done it quicker, but this is just a way of making sure that you know, you can freehand anything, but sometimes it's just nice to, to really try and do something right and, and get it accurate. So this is just bonding coat we're using. It's grey because we bought this from a store which has the grey stuff. So we are right in the middle of where the grey and brown bonding coat meets. So most, some of you will only have used one or the other, but we seem to use both up here.
So obviously I am freehanding it a little bit, but we're still using this as a guide just to make sure that we're not too far away from the correct shape. So that's it basically done. There's about a 10 to 12 mil coat on there, so it's about what the manufacturers recommend. This is with the whole room floated. And here's a little sneak preview of our full video of this room, which will be coming up soon. And that's it all skimmed, ready for painting. So that's it, I hope you like that a little video. It's something that we don't do very often, so we, that's why we decided to take the opportunity to, to make a little video out of it. But so if it's something that you've done before and you know if you've got any tips or advice for us, please let us know. If there's anything we could have done better or anything that we did wrong, feel free to uh, enlighten us in the comments and, and the like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next one.